Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. I thought I would sit down and do another video for you guys and gals. I just did one. Let me just do a second one back to back. Refilled my water glass first. Let me get a sip of water. Get my radio voice going. Let's talk about this. You know, I've mentioned multiple times recently, made videos explaining that the supplement industry does not have safety testing. Okay, we need to be clear here. So when people are buying supplements, you need to understand it does not require safety testing. They have an exception in the law. They are not required to test the safety or long-term safety of anything that they sell you. They are not required to test it for safety. The FDA allows them an exception and in exchange, they agree to largely make products that don't work. Ooh, again, people don't seem to know this. They're unaware of how the law works. The supplement industry can't sell you things that produce pronounced effects. They get pulled off the shelf. They get outlawed. They become controlled substances. Does everyone get this? They have an exception that has now been in place for 30 years, almost 30 years, in the United States. The Supplement Control Act in the 90s. This gives them exceptions to the rule. They're not required to produce products at work. They just can't. They have to be careful on how they advertise with the claims. Okay. And in exchange, they also are largely unregulated. They don't have to do safety testing. They are only required to pull a product off the shelf if they know it's dangerous. If there's no reason or evidence to think it's dangerous, they can sell it. They also spike products all the time. They've been caught, they've been fined for this numerous times. Over and over and over and over the supplement industry and some of the big companies have been caught spiking products with drugs. And the people say, oh, free drugs. Yeah, except when it's meth. Oh, yeah, that's happened a few times. All right, do, do we understand this? Everyone on the same page. Here's another big problem. Everyone's like, oh yeah, so no safety testing, but uh, well, here's that. what that also means. They don't have quality controls. In other words, their products are oftentimes contaminated, uh, toxic, everything else, this thing with things that aren't on the label, All right? Do you understand that? They are not required to go through the same safety testing that food and drugs are, and that includes the production side. And they don't even follow the guidelines they're given. Do you guys realize that when consumer reports, and this is one reason I've been very careful with the protein powders I pick. I mean, protein powder is generally about the safest thing, probably the only real useful thing the supplement industry makes. But I discussed this years ago. For over a decade, Consumer Reports has occasionally pulled all the major brands and done testing for serious contaminants. They've done testing to see how much actual real protein's in there, if it's been spiked with stuff. They've also tested for heavy metals, and that's the big one. Literally, just your regular protein powder. I would only recommend a brand that's been independently tested by Consumer Reports. Why? Heavy metals are in there. Major brands, and I'm talking, they've gone through and picked the big companies, the ones you all know. I'm talking the big companies. Know what they find? Unacceptable levels of lead arsenic. Okay, uh, I forget the third one they were testing for, but lead and arsenic levels. They have found unacceptably high levels of lead or arsenic in over half of the major name brand protein powders. You know, so all these people are here talking about, oh, I don't want this or that in my food, but they'll buy a protein powder that has an excessive level of lead in it, an excessive level of arsenic. And I'm not saying any people say, oh, I don't want any of that. You can't avoid them. They're in the water you drink, they're in the food you eat. If you grow your own food in your garden, in your yard, your broccoli is going to have arsenic in it. Hopefully you know this. Everything that you eat is poisonous to some extent. We have a liver that handles it. We know what safe levels are. What's a reasonable level? How much can you tolerate? What's a safe amount? Um, protein powders, just one example, oftentimes exceed that. 
So what do you think about all the other stuff you're taking? When you're buying all these things from these companies, the odds that they're contaminated with stuff, whether it's lead, arsenic, sawdust, right? That's happened. It's just dirt off the floor. Do you really think they care? These companies don't care about you. They wouldn't be in this business if they cared about you. They know most of their products are a scam. So do you really and truly think the best interest of the consumer is a concern when they know their products generally don't work and it's a scam industry? The owners know this. The managers of production all know this. They already know this. They know what the laws are. They know what the industry is. They know what the research actually shows. They know their products don't work. They know they're not required to have the same quality controls for sanity, contaminants, anything else that the food industry requires and definitely not that the pharmaceutical industry requires. They're allowed to sell you products that are not safety tested and they know that they're not safety tested. Do you really think they care that there's excessive rat droppings or arsenic or anything else in the stuff they're selling you? They're already scam artists who only care about your money. But they put up a face. The owners, they talk about these things and they speak at events and expos. Okay. Do you not understand that con men are often good salesmen? Does anyone not get this? But they seem like a nice person. Do you not realize that, that successful scam artists are good at coming across as nice people? They make you feel warm and fuzzy, make you feel like they care. They're polite and nice and all this other nonsense. That's the mark of a con artist. That is how a scam artist works. They trick you. I feel like people who, who do this stuff and follow this have never been conned. You've never been hustled by anybody. You've lived some very, very, very sheltered lives. Okay, so you come back over to that point. They're con men with no safety testings in place. Do you really think that there's a good chance that the product that you're even buying from them doesn't have, unless it's been independently tested, I don't know how many roaches are in there. How many roaches got ground up in there? How many mouse droppings are in there? How much sawdust is in there? Do you think the owners even know or care? They probably don't have the quality controls in place to care. Right? Same people talk about, oh, you know, this black market gear, possibly made whatever, or really, you, the supplements you're buying, you really think they're any better than some black market stuff? Do you really think that? you have evidence to that? Not like they're required for it to be. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.